We've got the all new Infiniti QX60. This is the one vehicle Infiniti has to have a home run with. Let's get in, go for a drive. Here we go, Zach. Infiniti's back, baby. Ooh, sounds good. What's under the hood of the QX60? A 3.5 liter V6 engine with a nine speed automatic transmission. Out is the CVT. 295 horsepower and 270 pound-feet of torque. Standard all-wheel drive in Canada, but in the U.S., front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive options on every trim. You're going to have to put premium fuel in this QX60. So the Infiniti QX60 is their best seller, and it is based on the Nissan Pathfinder, but yeah. it isn't a Pathfinder. You get more stuff. What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a 12.3 inch touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay and wired Android Auto, heated front seats and a heated steering wheel, eight-way power front seats, driver seat memory, leather appointed upholstery, seven passenger seating, a panoramic sunroof and a power lift gate. All right, Andrea, they got this new infotainment wheel. What are mm. we going to put it in? You have to put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review, twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you subscribe, hit that bell, ding the bell, but also follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea. And for me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And the links are below. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. So Andrea gave you a little sneak peek of what we're doing on Instagram. And a lot of people ask, how does this compare yeah. to the Pathfinder that it's based on? What are we going to do, Andrea? We're going to talk about it in questions, coffee and cars. You've got some great questions. But how does this compare to the last model? Well, Infiniti has made some big improvements with the suspension, the steering. It offers a more comfortable drive, less body roll, improved fuel economy, and the towing capacity is now 6,000 pounds on those two top trims. So you know what you can tow, Zach? What's that, Andrea? A 22-foot Airstream. You'd have to, well, I'm just trying to do the math on this. You would probably could buy three of these for the price of a 22-foot Airstream. They're so expensive. They sure you are. You know, Andrea's idea of camping <laughs> is going to a hotel without a hair dryer. That's camping for Andrea. Actually, that's not true, Zach. You're, you're making me come out as uh, not a camper. A, as a diva? Oh, a bit of a diva? I'm a camper. I'll sleep in a tent or even a Volkswagen van. I just need to have a washroom nearby. That's all I ask for. Uh, for Americans, I'll translate. That's a restroom. <laughs> But how do you like the way this thing looks? I like it. Those slim LED headlights with the piano key design look fantastic. It's got a big, bold grille and front bumper. And I love the glass at the back. It's got a real Range Rover look to it. I like the shoulders on it. It's got a nice sort of curve to the front hood with broad shoulders. Same at the back. The slim LED tail lamp that goes from side to side. Everybody's doing that these days. The yeah. script is on the back as well. But what about... <laughs> I know what you're going to say, Zach. The big chrome... <sighs> fake exhaust finishers on the lower bumper. What the hell, Infinity? I know, why Infinity? That is a no-go for me. I hear that the base trims have more of a matte finish. I think that this shiny chrome looks even worse. I bet you there's gonna be an aftermarket company that comes out with a replacement yeah. part for that that makes it look less obvious. I don't understand. Okay, so uh, putting dual exhaust through the bumper with real exhaust finishers can be done. Yeah. I don't know why they just don't do that. I know, and the new MDX has real ones now. They got away from this. So obviously I think because there's a Type S coming and you certainly can't have fake ones, can you? So big improvement on the way that it drives. We're gonna get into that as we mentioned as a comparison to the Pathfinder in a moment. But then when you look at the inside, this needed a major refresh and it got it. Wow, did it ever need it with the technology? And you're right, Zach, it's still a comfortable QX60 and the fit and finish is beautiful. They've always had great leather, but now it's the technology, a standard 12.3 inch touchscreen. Now, when it comes to best value trim- Andrea, what's the best value trim? Zach always likes to announce that. Well, well that's, I, I, I gotta do something over here. <laughs> the base model, comes with a lot of features. We already went through that, but if you just go up one trim to the Lux trim, 
it's a little bit more money, $4,500 Canadian, $6,000 US, but you get three features that I want. 20 what are inch they? wheels. 20 inch wheels. Pro Pilot Assist with Nav Link. Mm -hmm. And the final one is the 12.3 inch digital driver display. Now in the US, you also get ventilated front seats on that trim. We don't in Canada. How much is that trim? In Canada, it's $59,500 and just under fifty four in the US. Now, our best value trim over at the MDX is the Tech, and it's roughly just over $60,000. So well done, Infinity. This is a brand that has been struggling. Yeah. They've had diminished sales. They have some ancient cars that they've left to rot on the vine for far too long. Yeah. Finally, they come around to their best seller, the QX60. They update it with all the tech that Andrea has gone through. Yeah. And they price it better than its absolute direct competitor. Well done, Infinity. Smart marketing smart marketing. Now, the trim that we're test driving is the sensory trim. That's where you're going to get all of those extra features in Canada. You've got the ventilated front seats. And then in both Canada and the US, heated rear seats, a head-up display, these extra things that you want. But this isn't the top trim. How come they didn't give us the top trim? They always give us the top trim. Why didn't we get the top trim? Well, I think we didn't get the top trim because this has everything. But Zach, you might ask, what's on the top trim, Andrea? That's what I'm wondering. What's on the top trim? Well, that's where you get the captain's chairs. Uh. You don't get a bench seat. A bench seat is standard on all trims except for that top trim. And you also get the quilted leather seats with that nice piping. You see that in the MDX as well. Okay, one more thing, yeah. The black roof. This uh. is new to Infinity. We saw that that in the Pathfinder as well on the top trim. I'm okay with two of those things not being here. One is a bench seat in the second row. To me, just makes this a practical vehicle, practical all the time. Yeah. And then the quilted seats. You know our thoughts on quilted seats, everyone. <laughs> it's overdone. Uh, they're gonna look so 2020 or 2019 in yeah. a few years. I kind of like this better. It's simple, it's clean, and uh, you know, three in the second row is the way to go. Now here's me getting in the back seat. There's plenty of room, but it's slightly different than the Pathfinder that this is built on. What did they do? Well, they gave you more front row legroom in the Pathfinder by two inches, but they gave you more in the second row by two inches in the QX60. So that's where the difference is. I think if you're a tall person, then maybe that front row leg room might be great for you. I've heard that from followers who bought the Pathfinder. And then getting in the back seat, who's kidding who? These <laughs> are for kids. You yeah. can sit in the back if you have to, but uh, you need to move the second row forward. Maybe that's why they did it. They have an extra bit of reach in the second row and yeah. it gets you into the back seat. Now there's something about your ankle knee hip <laughs> ratio. What the hell's that? Well, Zach, they increased the hip to heel ratio uh, in the third row. So now my knees aren't up at my chest. Chest. I still feel a little bit of that in the third row, but it's supposed to improve the comfort level. And also when you have the bench seat in the second row, you can get in and out of that third row easier because the opening is larger. All right, the other thing is uh, with carry on and a cooler, the big question is with the third row up, does the hatch close? The hatch does close. It passed our carry on in a cooler test with ease. But you know what, Zach? This is not best in class space in this QX60. Both the Aviator and the MDX offer more second and third row space and more behind the third row. The QX60 gets 14.5 cubic feet, but the other two get over 18 cubic feet. One thing to point out though that the MDX has as well as this QX60 is under floor storage behind that third row, yeah, 1.91 cubic feet. Yeah, it's actually quite big. There's a lot of room under there if you want to yeah. hide things out of the way as well. All right, we talked about it already. Pathfinder Infinity, which one's right for you? Let's get into it. Time now for questions, coffee and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Looks good. Is the perceived quality and driving feel of the QX60 noticeably better than the new Pathfinder? Most yes. definitely. For me, it's all about the suspension. So our biggest complaint, there are two complaints of the Pathfinder. Yeah. Uh, the first one that was the most notable was the suspension is really quite crashy over bumps. Mm -hmm. This one has the initial damping of the suspension is smoother. It's yeah. still very firm though. It's firmer than I expected it would be for an Infinity product, but I like it. The Pathfinder is really firm. It drives more like a truck for sure. And then the other thing is this nine-speed automatic 
is smooth and it's quick shifting. I found with the Pathfinder that it was tough to get out of first gear. There was a slight delay there. We didn't feel that though on the Frontier. Is it really worth paying the extra for this rather than just buying the Nissan equivalent? What more would you get for so much more you have to pay? It's a good question actually, isn't it? Well, it's based on the same platform, same engine, drive line, the suspension is different and the interior is different and you get a longer warranty and it looks different. So, I mean, it does add up to more. You have to decide whether you think it's worth it. Well, the top trim of the Pathfinder is the same price as the base model of the QX60. The Pathfinder, That's clever, clever, right? Right. The Pathfinder comes loaded. I mean, you get your ventilated front seats and your heated rear seats and a head up display. You don't get those items in the base model of the QX60. However, mm -hmm. the QX60 comes with a larger touchscreen, a 12.3 inch, whereas the Pathfinder on that top trim is nine inches. So you have to ask yourself, do you want that fully loaded Pathfinder for the same price? Or do you want to get a more premium brand and just get that base model that really has a lot of features? I like the screen better in the Pathfinder. Do you? Yes, I think that I like the big knobs on either side of the Pathfinder mm. screen. I like the way you interact with it better. This is kind of different the way they do it, um, but I like the interior of this much more. I like the screen better in this. I like the size of the screen and the way that it sits on the dash. It's a little bit more streamlined in modern, but hey, to each their own, right, Zach? Do you think having the touch climate controls is a significant drawback to this vehicle? I don't love it. I would prefer just regular switches. I appreciate what they've done though, mm -hmm. not having to go into a, like a touch screen like the radio. Yeah. Um, it has this weird thing where you push it and it has this little vibration. It feels like the whole panel's moving. Uh, we just checked it again off camera. No, it's and, not. And it's not moving, but it gives you this click noise. Yeah, it's kind of like the Q7. The Q7 does the same thing. I don't mind it. The only thing is it gets kind of dirty. There's a lot of fingerprints yeah, on it black, and some yeah. dust, but it's easy enough to use. And I would much rather have this, like Zach said, than having to go into the screen and put on my heated seats or heated steering wheel. Now, the one thing I just want to say quickly is that when we got this, I, I was trying to scan up and down the radios yeah. uh, stations and I couldn't figure it out because the, the, the tune up and tune down buttons are not on the radio. No, they're not in the wheel. They're actually by the heat controls. And after the first trip, I, I turned the car off and I looked at the heat and I go, why would they put the scan and tune there? No. It's the strangest thing. But now that I know it, it doesn't bother me because no. now I know where it is. And the other thing about the wheel, so you can control this touchscreen at the center console or as a touchscreen, the wheel doesn't work for everything. No. There are certain um, things that you're on that you can't get off unless you use the touch screen. Once again, it's something you get used to and it's no big deal, but it took a while to kind of learn it. Really all it's doing is letting you scan up to your next preset radio. You can't tune to the next station. You no. have to use that silly button by the heat, but it's basically just allowing you to go up and down what you already got preset. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? This is an elegant and good looking looking luxury SUV. I'm glad Infiniti has come back to a regular automatic transmission. I know that the MDX is the benchmark, but has Nissan products done enough to keep up with the Acura? So the Acura MDX is the best selling three row premium SUV on the market, period. They sell yeah. a lot of them because they're the ones that invented the category. It's a great vehicle. It handles really well. It feels like you're driving a large sedan. This feels like you're driving an SUV. Yeah, it has more of a trucky suspension. Now we yeah. mentioned in Questions Coffee and Cars, it is much improved over the Pathfinder that we both thought the suspension was too crashy. This is a nice compromise. Actually, you know what this reminds me of, Andrea? What? It reminds me of our Porsche Cayenne yeah. suspension, which is a little bit bumpy yeah. to give you that sporty feel very similar. Yeah, and this is a suspension that I really like. So would you pick the MDX over this or vice versa? It really depends what you're looking for. You sit lower to the ground with the MDX. I was a little bit surprised about that. I'm a big fan of the way it handles. 
The only thing that I don't like with the MDX oh, wait. There's is... a few things, Andrea. Get it. Uh, get into it. Okay. Uh, the trackpad. Yeah. It drives me bonkers. And also the push button shifter. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of that either. But what I do like about the MDX is all the space that it offers. And even in that third row, it's not bad. You know what's interesting? Uh, this has come up a lot. So we're actually going to do a comparison of the two vehicles. Yeah. Um, so if it is already out, I'll put the card here. And if it's not already out, you're watching this the first day this video drops, it'll be yeah. out in a few days. But the thing about the trackpad and the center console, there's a lot of piano black trim in the MDX. Mm -hmm. And it has that big stupid drive control knob that's yeah. the centerpiece of the car. I don't know why they do that. But all of that included in the MDX, it's a fantastic product. Mm -hmm. I could live with some of those things because they did a good job until this showed up. I know. Yeah. In the past, there is just no way I could recommend the QX60. It was too old. I can recommend this one. And I have had so many questions on Instagram saying, Andrea, what would you pick? MDX or this QX60? You know what? Nine speed automatic transmission, way improved over the old CVT. Interior tech is yeah. better than the MDX because there's real buttons and things. You don't have to use a stupid trackpad. No. No. But I would say that has more of a luxury kind of drive yeah. and a really nice handling product. This is a little bit more tricky. All right, let's get into what else you can buy in this category. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Acura MDX with a 3.5 liter V6 engine, 290 horsepower, and a starting price of just under $58,000. The Lincoln Aviator with a 3 liter twin turbo V6, 400 horsepower, and a starting price of $71,000. The Audi Q7 has a base 2 liter turbo 4 cylinder with 248 horsepower and a starting price of $70,500, or you can get the turbocharged V6 with 335 horsepower for $75,000. The Lexus RX 350L with three rows of seats. It has a 3.5 liter V6, 290 horsepower, and a starting price of $60,500. So there are four luxury seven passenger SUVs for you to consider. So you probably want to know, how much does this thing cost? That's vital for a lot of people in the premium space. Let's do the vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The base front wheel drive model in the US starts at just under $47,000. The base model, all-wheel drive model, is just under $54,000 in Canada and just under $49,000 in the U.S. The sensory trim we're test driving is just under $65,000 Canadian and just over $58,000 U.S. Our best value trim goes to the Lux at $59,500 Canadian, just under $55,000 U.S. JD Power is not rated the 2022 model yet, but the 2020 QX60 gets a quality and reliability score of 81 out of 100. Car Edge states the QX60 will retain 46% of its value after five years. Here's the fuel economy, 11.9 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 9.5 on the highway. That's 21 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway. The towing capacity is 3,500 pounds on the lower trims. The top two trims can tow 6,000 pounds. Infinity offers a four year, 100,000 kilometer or 60,000 mile warranty. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I love the improved handling and the way this drives and the quick shifting nine speed automatic transmission. Way better interior technology. What I'd like to see is wireless Android Auto. And redo the rear bumper, that thing's goofy. Infinity needed to bring their A game with this QX60 and they did. This is one I'm going to recommend. They have to do the Q50, the QX50, all of their cars. Come on, Infinity. Let's get on with it. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.